everybody, this is Oliver, and I'd like to show you a content app that I've created recently. And I know I've shown it before, but uh, a lot has changed since then, and I think it's okay um, to have another little demo. So let's get started. So if you've not seen it before, uh, what is it? It is a content app for H5P, as I said. And here we have a text input field, which obviously is meant to type something in. And up here is my, my task. Please describe the novel The Hobbit by J.R. Tolkien with up to 500 characters. So um, what should I write? Um, I could be lazy and um, <laughs> at a demo one person suggested to type just what's written here. And so I'll do that just for demonstration purposes. And let's click on check and see what happens. Okay, so instantly we get some feedback. Uh, to summarize the book, you should really mention the main character by name at least once. Okay, I should do that. Um, also, there seems to be a wizard that I forgot. Um, yeah, let's yeah let's just try again before we peek at the solution. So we click on retry, and we can erase that. And I'll just um, write or try to write a brief summary, and let's see what happens. So this is my second attempt, and let's check again. I mean, something happened. Um, you see, uh, my here I, I mentioned Bilbo, and I also mentioned the wizard, and I know it's spelled incorrectly, but uh, for purpose. And um, yeah, obviously this was a little better, not perfect, but okay. And also there's some other feedback now. Um, there's smog, obviously. Um, uh, this was good because I mentioned the dragon's name and that uh, yeah, was kind of good. Um, yeah, so what else can we do? Uh, we can click on show solution or we could retry again, of course, but let's have a look at the solution and the screen jumps right there. Um, and oh, okay, it's just an example. I didn't have to come up with exactly that solution, but I think it's, it's kind of similar because I've wrote both, of course. Um, yeah, so uh, we can go back up again. We could retry again, as you know from H5P. Um, how does it work? It's a pretty, pretty dump solution, and I'm not very proud of it uh, from a technical background um, or te technical perspective, because it just scans for keywords, but with a little intelligence, or I shouldn't say intelligence, uh, with little intelligence put into it. Um, and maybe we should have a look at the backend of WordPress and have a look how it looks like and what we can do with it. That is the editor of H5P SA. And if you know the previous video, then you will notice some differences because I received feedback from Yelena, the designer of Yubel, who um, gave me feedback on the interface, which is much cleaner now. Thank you. And I also got some uh, feedback from the beta testers who suggested new features, which are now in here. So thank you too. And let's have a look. So of course you have a test description, you've seen that, and uh, the help text, you've seen that as well. And if you want to, you can um, add a sample solution. So if you don't want to, then you don't have to, but then of course um, the students won't see a solution because um, in this case, there isn't just one solution that you could give. That's why it's called sample solution. So you have to, to give a solution uh, if, you, if you need one. And then down here, we have the keywords, which are the um, yeah, main part of SI, I guess. And you can see you can have a keyword like dwarfs, and you can add variations if there are some, like dwarfs in this case, which V and E, different spelling, which is also correct. And you can define some, um, some settings here which first of all are points that can be awarded if the keyword is found in the text. And you can set um, a number of occurrences, um, which will define how often you will get points uh, for the keyword if it's found in the text. So maybe we could go to Bilbo um, in this case, because he's important. And you could say um, this character is important and I don't want to give more points if it uh, it's found in the text, but um, in this case, um, I will give 10, time, uh, 10 points each time Bilbo is found in the text up to three times. So you could uh, get a total of 30 points for Bilbo. Yeah, I hope that was uh, 
yeah, you could understand that. Um, was a suggestion from a beta tester, so thank you. Um, then we have case sensitivity, and that is not too special. We have forgive minor mistakes. Um, I think it's not special because it's in some other kind of types as well, like filling in the blanks. But I used it here uh, for Gandalf, where correct spelling is with an F, and you will rem remember that I wrote it with a V in the text, so um, it was just a minor mistake, and you could decide that the idea is more important than spelling, and that it should be um, a word as well. So you can yeah, you can play a little bit with that. So try to write Gandalf with, with V and E, maybe, then um, it shouldn't be correct. Okay, what else do we have? We have feedback for uh, each keyword and uh, in two ways. First of all, you can set a feedback text uh, for the case that the keyword is found in the text. I didn't have one here. Um, and you can also define feedback um, in the case that the keyword is not in the text. So you've seen that. I, I got the message that um, maybe I should mention this certain wizard. Okay, um, what else? Um, Keyword-wise, we have this one here, which um, was also a suggestion from one of the beta testers. You can use the asterisk as a wildcard. So in this case, any word that ends with R and I will be counted as correct. Uh, doesn't matter what's in front. Um, I used that uh, for Dori, Nori, and Ori, which are dwarfs in the text, and um, if you want to save some time and not write variations, then you could um, you could use this um, uh, notation. Probably makes more sense in language context. We have verbs and uh, different endings for verbs. Uh, verbs, a funny word, verbs. Um, um, yeah, you could you could use the asterisk and, and probably save a lot of time because you don't have to think of all the variations that are possible so you can just use the work and, and you can uh, use it at the end of a word of course too or in the middle of a word doesn't matter um, then we have the overall feedback but that is not um, special for uh, hfp essay because that's in many um, content types but you can define a score range and then decide which feedback um, uh, should be presented and then down here, we have the behavioral settings. Um, first of all, minimum number of characters, which was a suggestion from one of the beta testers. Um, I set it to zero, but you could maybe have set it to 100. And um, if a student doesn't write at least 100 characters and clicks on check, he, he or she will get a message that um, he has to answer more. And then we have maximum number of characters, and I think that is the most crucial element of H5P essay because that's where pedagogy is hidden. So what happens if you limit the number of characters in the text, um, then people have to think, um, okay, what is important? Uh, what do I really have to put in the text? What don't I have to put in the text because it's not so important? So that is what gets you thinking. Yeah, um, input field size, Nothing special, nothing special. Oh yeah, let's, oh yeah, this is also important. Um, and you might wonder what that is, but let's go to passing percentage first. Um, if you want to use um, H5P essay for something like grading or at least giving feedback, you would have passed, you, you wouldn't have passed in a real scenario. And then you can define a percentage. And if you got more points than 50%, um, then we will, you will pass. And the same is true for mastering. And um, that is kind of tricky because um, people might be tempted to not write uh, good texts, but to guess the keywords they have to enter in order to pass. Um, yeah, I link to a video which probably um, makes it more clear why I, why, was, um, why, why I included this option, this one here, because if I click on ignore scoring, um, then you will see these fields disappear and um, in the front end if you click on check you will not get the progress bar or information about points you will just get the feedback um, yeah it's a pedagog uh, pedagogical reason and of course if you think that's nonsense you can uh, just uncheck it and that's the default setting um, by the way and um, you can use it for scoring if you like but um, I think this is also um, a valid option. So to totally ignore it and just 
uh, use this uh, content type to give feedback, but not in the form of points. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, I hope you like the content type and I hope you like the video. If you do, um, leave me a like and yeah, probably leave me a comment, which would even be better. Uh, tell me what you like, what you don't like, and um, tell me if there's a feature that you would like to have. And I'll see if I can find the time to edit. Yeah. Um, oh, of course, did I mention? Um, I'll put a link in the description uh, where you can already download this content type if you like to use it because it's not uh, yet, uh, um, it has not yet been released, but it will be in January, fingers crossed. So um, until then, just give it a try if you download it. And yeah, take care. Bye bye.